Hello, I'm Rosella from Stitching in the Moment. Today, I just want to go through a few of my favourite knots. Now, if you follow me, you'll know that I stitch every single day. And some days, if it's really, really busy, it is a knot. Either a French knot, I'm going to cover colonial knots, Chinese knots and bullion knots. Um, this is one of my stitching. So, and this is the 2020 and if you have a look you can see that already even though with there's not much stitching on here we've already got quite a collection of knots they're a great filler and I use them to sort of lead and trail through my stitching so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run through a few of these knots for you so let me swap over and let me bring this one in for you so let's start with a real favourite, a French knot. Um, if I had a pound for every time I've demonstrated a French knot, I'd be a very rich lady by now. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring your needle up through the fabric. Now, you can see that I'm using my seat stand. And what that means, especially with knots, is that I've got two hands then so that I can really hold the thread well. So I'm going to bring my needle up and I'm right-handed. With my left hand, I'm just going to pull the thread to the side there quite gently. And then I'm just going to wrap my needle under that thread, let's say a couple of times. I'm going to put the needle back down in the fabric close to, but not in the same hole. So when you're uh, making French knots, if you find that when you pull it through, it goes straight through your fabric, it's probably because it's in the same hole. So what I'm doing then is I've pulled my thread quite taut to the needle there, and I'm just keeping it under control whilst I pull that needle through. And there we go, we've got a French knot. So let me just repeat that. So needle through the fabric, hold it to the side, wrap my needle round a couple of times. You can actually do as many wraps as you like on a French knot. What you need to remember is that instead of it being proportionally larger, the more wraps, it becomes taller. So all I'm going to do, keep it under control and then pull it gently through. Now, you saw the loop there, we could actually keep that loop on and if you end up with a loopy French knot that's fine because um, I look at it, so if I just pull it down to the loop that would make a really nice um, lavender flower maybe, you know they have those sort of loops on the top so if you've got loopy French knots embrace them, they're great. So that's your French knot and you can see that's, that's really quite a nice chunky knot. Um, if you don't like French knots, if you don't want to do any more French knots, you want to try something a little different, how about a Chinese knot? So a Chinese knot, ever so slightly different, again, we're going to come through, and then we're actually going to create a loop on the fabric. So I'm going to wrap the thread over my finger, and I'm just going to, whoops, wrap it over my finger and twist it so that I've got that loop on the fabric. Then again, I'm going to pop my needle down and you can see having a, a hoop is really, really useful. And I'm going to then tighten the thread to the needle and then I'm going to pull it through again. So um, slightly smaller knot, I've just got the one loop with a little hole in the centre and this was used a lot in Chinese embroidery, lots and lots and lots of Chinese knots. So little loop on the fabric, put your needle through it, pull taut to the needle and then we can pull that through. So I can't be doing with doubles, let's have a, a third one of those as well. A little loop, close to pull it taut and then we can pull it through. So you can see a little bit of a difference in size, that did have a double wrap and um, that's like a little circle, you can also leave a tail on that if you wanted. Um, another favourite of mine is the colonial knot which I find a little bit more difficult to explain but I'll try. So through the fabric, again I'm going to pull the thread to the side and I'm actually going to put my needle over and under. So I'm going from left under to the right. Then my, my working thread here is going to cross over the top. So I've got almost a little figure of eight there. And then I'm going to pop that in again close to and then pull it through. Slightly different again. I quite like colonial knots. They're, they're a little bit more uniform and neater, I think. Let me do that again. I'll see if I can explain it again. So, to the side, needle, I'm right-handed, left to right. 
So I've got to wrap over. Working thread then forward and over to create that little figure of eight. In we go and down and through. And one further one. Out we come. Left to right, over the front, in we go, and we go down. So I've got a few single knots there. Bullion roses, bullion knots. They are so useful. So let me just show you my way of doing a bullion knot, which is possibly slightly different to the way that you've normally seen it demonstrated. So I'm going to come through my fabric and then I haven't got a very long tail, but it should be long enough for this. I'm going to decide how long a bullion knot I want. So we'll just have a just a small one there. And I'm putting my needle all the way through. I'm then going to bring my needle back up in the original hole. Now, if you feel that you're going to split your thread, then put it next to it. Don't go in the same hole. Don't split your thread, otherwise it'll just not work. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it around the needle. And so I'm going to go, let's try half a dozen times. Now the great way, uh, great thing about this method is if I then fold it over and just lean that needle over, I can see whether those stitches are actually covering the gap that I want them to cover. So if I need to add more or take any away, at this stage I can. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold on to those coils, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm probably going to put my hands in the way for this, and then I'm going to feed that needle through those coils. Pull it all the way through, and then I'm going to Pull it over towards its end spot. At this point, if you think it needs a bit of a tidy up, tickle its tummy to make it nice and neat and back down in that hole again so that you've then got a nice little bullion knot. Now, I've made it easy on myself by using uh, the, needle, the needle I prefer. So this needle is a milliner's needle. And the whole of the eye is this, and the whole of <laughs> the whole of the whole of the eye is the same thickness as all of the shaft of the needle. It's actually cut into it. So on embroidery needles where they flare out at the end makes it great for threading. But it does mean that when you get to balloon knots, when you get to French knots, they tend to sort of clog up, and you can't necessarily get your coils through. So if you are having that trouble probably better described, then uh, try milliner's needles, sometimes called straw needles. So back up in the hole where you started, not splitting your thread, wrap it round, tilt that needle over, see if it's about the right distance. If you want a loopier bullion knot, then just put more wraps on. Keep it under control. You're not wrapping it so tightly that you're actually choking it. You are just covering the needle with those wraps and you can actually make them looser as well. So a couple there and actually this could be the beginning of a little bullion rose, couldn't it? So we'd sort of, I would need to change thread for this, but we'll go around the corner ever so slightly. We'll come up and let's that a few wraps. I'm going to go around a corner so I want a few extra wraps. You know what, I really probably should have changed thread at this point. But we all know what that's like, don't we? And I'm going to pull it through, tease it into position where I want it to sit, and then it's going to... Actually, I think a little bit of greenery on that, that'd make quite a nice rosebud, wouldn't it? So that's four of my favourite knots. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.